Okay, here is a brief video of my uh, Bruder Shafe conversion so far. Uh, there's a lot of things to say about this thing so far, for sure. As number one, um, the motors that are in it, I've said this before, are not the motors that are going to be in it when it's finished. Um, like I said also before, getting things right now is really difficult. Uh, I have had a, a six wire slip ring on order for about a month, almost almost two months. Uh, actually, I had two of them. I don't know where they are. Uh, so the one I put in there right now, it's just a four wire that came out of my Huina 580. But the reason it's in there is because the ones that I ordered are exactly the same for the size and all that. So the design, uh, the, the amount of wires doesn't reflect the design that you need to come up with to make it work, right? Same thing with the the motors as well and the cylinders. Like, I can switch those motors out. Uh, I was able to find one 500 RPM 6-volt motor, which I haven't tried yet. Um, I kind of feel like it might be a little bit too fast. I really would like to get some 400 RPM ones. I thought that would be a, a decent uh, place to go. Uh, or, uh, sorry, um, speed to start at. Um also, as well, right now, um, there's a video I'll, I might post that doesn't have me talking on. Uh, and I put a motor in there to turn it. That's a 300 RPM motor. It's insanely fast. <laughs> it would throw the operator out of the cab or make him throw up all over inside of it, as for an example like this. <laughs> so it's pretty quick, but again, I wanted to showcase that you know, the wires on the bottom aren't moving. And everything else inside is so yeah it's a it's a slow process um, of getting all together and I'll switch motors out when I can actually get them and I hope that's sometime soon because it's been really challenging to try and put stuff together when you have uh, you have limited bits and pieces around I'm down to ESC's I've got two in here and I need uh, I don't know, maybe six or something like that. Maybe not that many, maybe four. I don't, I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. I uh, I want to get this bucket moving as well, so that'll be another thing to throw on. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing I really noticed about it too is um, each individual part that I did, uh, you know, I think I have it okay, and then you put it in and try it out, and it's not. So there's actually been a fair bit of sanding to do in this model. Uh, one thing I thought was really cool, I saw some, some stuff online. I don't know if you can kind of see it in there. Oh, it's not really the greatest. But there's a spur gear I got in there and then a pinion gear that came out of a Traxxas uh, model. And I don't have my bucket of parts here so I can't give you the, the number for it right now. But um, anyways, I put all that in and I thought everything was going well. Uh, the slip ring was actually taking up a little bit of space. So I had to sand the top of the gear off um, sort of uh, to the point where this is actually moving around a little bit uh, because the tabs that are inside there, they click over a ring and the slip ring was interfering with those tabs and the height of this was interfering with the tabs sitting down. So I had to sand a bit of the ring to get that to drop down, to get the tabs to engage and then once the tabs engaged, that was time for me to be able to look at the slip ring and then say, okay, I need to sand a bit of stuff out of here uh, to make this room, to make this move. Uh, I've got it locked in underneath. I'll do like a full on real good uh, build detail video on this thing when it's actually all fully done. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope to have, um, I actually was able to get some servos. Uh, I've been on Amazon Prime just scrounging whatever I can find <laughs> that's there. Um, so I did get some continuous rotation servos and that thing goes in. Um, and I am going to make the blade also function as well. So there will be uh, six wires down here that will need to get uh, hooked up to this slip ring or to the slip ring I'm getting when it comes. Uh, then I gotta figure out how to fit everything in there because as you can see that is just an absolute dong show right now. Uh, but yeah, it's all kind of slowly coming together. Uh, I think I'm going to get to a point here pretty soon where, um, I'm going to be getting held up by needing, uh, parts. Uh, I need ESCs. I need a whole bunch of stuff. I, 
I really want to I want to um, do some business, but it's pretty tricky to to do that when your stuff's sitting in order for God knows how long, and you're wondering where everything is. I don't, so I don't want to. I'm gonna have to be patient. Um, oops, there we go. there's the that's the 300 RPM. I might throw the 500 in on that one there, just to see what it's like um, for uh, for fun, just to give me an idea. Um, I did try playing around with endpoints and stuff to speed it up and slow it down, but I'd rather just have the right size motor and engage the throttle fully to uh, to, to 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 do what I got to do. So yeah, uh, like I said. Bucket will get done on this one. I do plan on somehow wanting to put limit switches in this. Um, yeah, that's going to be something to do because that's pretty tight for space in there. But I was thinking about seeing if I could uh, use uh, the spare ones out of my Huina 580 I have because they got those little tiny ones. And uh, that might actually work out uh, to be pretty good. Um, what else was I gonna say about this one? Oh yeah, I uh, I I think I want to do a different transmitter and receiver for this one. Uh, I've seen some of you guys have that white Fly Sky one, and I think it's got some push buttons on it for the tracks. I'd really like to have some push buttons on there, and then have all the functions running off of the the, the sticks. So yeah, then it's all just waiting for parts again. So. This is what I've been able to achieve so far with what I've got around the house. I'll have to swap things out so it's actually practical. Um, and uh, yeah, I think um, I think a slower RPM motor for, uh, for this pinion gear here might actually help to stabilize this a little more. It, the really fast motor, it, it, I, I think, it seems to want to really throw it forward and kind of maybe twist it a little bit. Like it's in a rush to get a hold of the spur gear. And I, I just would like some nice smooth easy just nice contact flowing nicely around you know maybe I can get a little bit more torque too because I did try and play around with pushing a little bit of potting soil around with the bucket and uh, you know if you go out lightly it, it, it will but it's so impractical because it's just so fast but uh, yeah so far like what a what a challenging little project and I never thought I'd be making an excavator so I'm pretty really happy about that it's been fun lots of good problem solving Super happy about the the cylinders and getting my uh, my drill press set up and on all my taps and stuff going was just the right thing to do because that's some of the easiest cylinder stuff I've ever had to make, which was really nice for a change because I've really come up with some pretty uh, not always the greatest ideas, but they worked. But um, yeah, no, I'm really happy with it so far. I uh, just need to get the the appropriate. Uh, motors into it all and uh, then the limit switches for the booms and stuff and so yeah it'll be done in like two years and uh, hopefully it'll be <laughs> finished by then. Alright thanks for checking it out. See ya.